Hello guys, today I'm going to show you how to make a CNC laser engraver. Let's do this. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the basic things that we're going to need to start making this project. So first we're going to need an Arduino a separate driver controller, a, a laser, a computer power supply, and two DVD-ROMs. I've left links in the description below so you can uh, find some of these items as well if you want to buy the entire kit you can just buy that but that's no fun we want to build our own one from the ground up with as little purchase parts as possible. So this is just a quick overview of um, everything that I've built and uh, let's look at a little bit of the details of how everything was uh, put together. Okay so this is the Arduino um, R3 board. These are the easy stepper um, drivers, uh, stepper motor drivers, there is two of them. In the center over there you can see um, a relay. And over here is my um, power on and off for communication with the computer. There's my uh, power supply. This is how I'm overriding the power supply so it can be always on. Uh, there's a little jumper wire in between the green wire and any of the black wires. So when you switch your power on from the um, wall, this thing will just switch on and start giving power. Okay, so let's have a quick look at how I've um, mounted on my stepper motor. So basically I've just cut off that green part um, that originally connected to the electronics and then I've just soldered on um, some computer uh, power button cables onto, uh, onto the stepper motor and, uh, and plug that into the stepper motor driver. This is my 250 milliwatt laser. Uh, and it's heatsink. Um, you basically have to change the z-axis for this thing so it can be high enough of the job to actually start cutting the job at the bottom. I've marked this board with the x and y axis uh, directions. This uh, laser is very weak so you might be able to cut into darker objects and not really paper or metal anything like that. You will basically um, wood and maybe tape and things this thing will be able to cut. At the top I've marked the center and limit of travel so that I can know when the laser is too far. I also did this on the sides. Since I don't have any limit switches on this thing so that I know when it is um, at its maximum. On the side here is where I've connected um, to my power supply just with some alligator clips. The heatsink has um, thermal paste inside of it. At the back of that you can see two wooden blocks spacing out the laser so it doesn't touch any of the other parts. At the back I just put a screw right through. Um, the center block is made out of cast iron. These are LG IDE DVD ROM so they're the older type but I found that they have a lot of metal structure on the inside. Um, you can see I've drilled a hole right through that after removing the parts and then put a screw to screw everything together. The easy stepper driver controllers are connected to the wooden plank with a motherboard screws. To make the laser switch on and off I'm using a relay with a transistor so it's not to overfeed um, the Arduino's um, amperage capabilities. You can probably also do this with a MOF set, but I couldn't find a MOF set. So I'm using this old dial-up modem. It's got a 3 volt relay on it. And it actually works perfectly well with um, 5 volts on it as well. I also added in this switch with a resistor to override the relay. This will make it easy to find the limits of the material. 
I've bolted the DVD-ROM to a wooden structure using bolts, nuts and washers. At the bottom I've bent uh, aluminium plates so I can create a L bracket. To get 5 volts for my power supply I've connected it up like this. Note it is connected on the red wire and one of the center black wires. Uh, the red is positive and the black is negative. I've cut the plastic away to get the clamps in but you can just as well solder something together. So over here we have the circuit diagram of the Arduino using Garbo and the easy driver zipper uh, drivers. So this will show you how to connect everything. So the Z axis over here we're obviously not going to use. Only the X and Y axis. So the ground is connected onto the ground of the Arduino. And then we've got for the X axis the step connected to the Arduino's uh, second port and the direction is set up onto 5 of the Arduino. For the Y axis we've got the step set up on 3 and we've got the direction set up on 6. Uh, my power supply is giving additional power to this entire system through ground and the 5 volt pins on the side here. To give additional power to the zipper uh, controller, I'm using the ground and 5 volts over here and I'm uh, giving now direct power to the zipper drivers. But uh, please note that the ground and 5 volts plus is not the correct way of doing it, it's just a short hack that I put in there because these are actually output pins. You're supposed to use the ground and M plus to give additional power. If you have a 6 volt voltage regulator, you can connect it up to um, these two pins as well. Just remember that supplying uh, too much voltage to these devices may blow them, especially the zipper motors. The zipper motors may actually overheat. For my spindle, I'm using uh, port number 12 over here. I've changed that in the source code uh, for uh, Garbo. It's originally on pin 11. Uh, pin 11 uses PWM, but when you change uh, the setting, it uses uh, pin number 12. I'll show you guys in a later video how to um, set up these pins properly. But basically what's happening, uh, PWM sends out pulses so that it will drive a spindle at a selected speed. So we do not want to have that, we want to have a clear on and off signal. So we go into the source code, change it a bit and then it uses this pin number 12 over here and basically swaps the operation of these two pins around. So we're using pin number 12 and switch things on and off using that. Here's my circuit diagram to switch the laser on and off. So this would be my Arduino pin. We run that through a resistor and then we've got a transistor over here and then um, we've got a diode over here and there's my relay. So this goes off to the positive this is gets grounded. I'm using this transistor as a small switch so that I do not pull too much current on my Arduino pin damaging it and trying to switch on the relay. The relay requires higher amount of current the switch on and off for the laser and then the laser um, can get proper power. So if I take only the laser and put it onto the transistor will not give me enough power for the laser to actually burn anything and if I only use the relay straight on the Arduino pin I'll burn the Arduino pin so I'm using a transistor and a relay like I said if you can find a mock set uh, then you sort it because um, you don't require that much current to switch the, uh, the mock set on and off and it can switch um, basically things on and off at a higher current than just what a tra normal transistor will be able to do. Let's talk about a couple of drawbacks of this design. First off, the screw type zipper motor actually um, has a sort of a backlash on it. So what this means is the screw is moving in the one direction and when it turns in the, to the other direction, you're supposed to have a little bit of uh, compensation inside there to turn it uh, an extra bit of distance back so that your accuracy stays the same. Big CNC machines has a setting in them called backlash compensation. The Garbo guys did say that they are 
uh, busy working on implementing something like that. For this version of Bubble, uh, we're kind of just stuck. So obviously if you have, can build something that is belt fed, that's going to be much better. The next issue has got to do with the size of things that you can cut. So you cannot cut very big objects with this. I think my play is about 32 uh, millimeters on each axis that I uh, am allowed to cut. The next issue is the material type that you can cut. So basically you can cut um, any dark type of material uh, that's of course not metal. Um, so maybe wood you can cut, uh, cotton you can cut, but if there's if you have paper that's too highly reflective and you won't be able to cut, masking tape um, may cut here and there. So you'd actually have to uh, maybe coat it with um, with a marker to be able to cut into it. I also for this design, I it's going to be too difficult to put in limit switches to, to run a homing cycle. So maybe uh, if I swap over this stuff onto a bigger type of design, I'll put limit switches on so I can do my homing and um, the machine will automatically know if it over travels. Next problem is a simple problem to solve. The separate drivers tend to overheat when the separate motor is not moving because it's locking the separate motor in place to make sure that that thing does not uh, move. So to compensate for this, you can just put in a little heatsink over that. The one that I have over here that I put on just now is from a graphics card aftermarket memory cooling chip system, but like say you can probably get these small heat sinks off of an old device or maybe just order them uh, online and that's it for this video in my next video i will go into more detail on the software side of the cnc laser cutter so please subscribe and you'll be notified when that goes up thank you for watching and see you in a bit